Okay, stat students, so we left off looking at this school assembly example, and we've discussed simple random sample, stratified random sample, and a cluster sample. So these are all the sampling techniques that we need to create the perfect sample, okay? Um, so what is the reason for all of this trouble with the sample? Uh, we discussed it a little bit, you know, at the beginning of this, these lessons, um, and, and it is that without proper sampling, you can't make any claims about what you're researching okay so for the cigarette smokers causing cigarettes causing cancer they had to take good samples or else there would be bias in their in their study okay uh, so the goal is to make what's called an inference so in your notes go ahead and write the word inference and so it's taking a sample and making a conclusion about the population okay so we have the definition on the screen here, process of drawing conclusions about a population on the basis of sample data. It's, and, and that's the idea of statistics, okay? We want information about a population, for instance, the United States, but it's a lot of work to ask every person something in the United States. It's less work to take a sample, okay? A smaller group of people that model the population, okay, and, and are diverse to make an inference. All right, and then in the green here that I've highlighted, I need you to write that. Why should we rely on random sampling? Well, to avoid bias in selecting samples from the list of available individuals. And then number two, the laws of probability allow trustworthy inference from the population. So in a few chapters, we'll get to probability. It's one of my favorite units. Uh, but probability has a big factor in, in the idea of making these inferences, okay? Um, we're gonna skip writing that, that first bullet point for now, There's something called margin of error, we'll get into that later. But uh, big point here, you have to take large samples too. You can't just get by with one or two people, you need more than that. So larger random samples give better information about the population. The larger your sample is, the more it should start to really model what your true population is. So larger samples gonna look like that population, okay? All right, so, the last, this is gonna be a very short lesson here today, uh, but the last part that we have here, uh, I'm gonna ask two questions and you'll put a yes or no. This is gonna be sort of like a poll. Um, you're gonna put yes or no on your sheet, okay? So, I'm gonna ask this question. Given in-person social interaction for teenagers has a positive impact on their mental health, do you think schools should reopen for face-to-face -face instruction? So I'm gonna pause the video, you say yes or no. Okay. I'm going to ask another question. Given that the pandemic is still a big problem for America, do you think schools should reopen for face-to-face -face instruction? Yes or no? Okay, so what you'll notice here is that I asked pretty much the exact same question. Do you think that schools should reopen for face-to-face -face instruction? Okay. And the problem with what happened here because what I'm trying my point that I'm trying to make here is even though maybe I've taken the perfect sample I can still mess it up with something like this okay um, this is a type of bias it's called wording of questions and this definitely does happen when surveying you know some people who want to get uh, a group to see it their way or has uh, money tied up in the decision that that is made from the statistics, uh, they may word these questions. And these questions that I've put in here are worded in such a way that it, it invokes an emotional response, okay? Uh, this made you feel bad for teenagers, right? You guys need social interaction. It has a positive impact on your mental health. So mental health's been a, uh, we've tried to make strides in our country towards having good mental health for everyone. So all those sort of like power words in there sort of affect that response. Then you see here, uh, the, I use the word pandemic, right? It's very scary. Uh, it's a big problem for America. And, and I probably could have worded this even more scary. Uh, and I said, do you, based on that, should we return? You know, you're sort of wanting to say no because it is, it feels like it's such a big problem still, okay? So we have a list of things uh, right here that, that could go wrong. So in your notes, right, sample surveys, what can go wrong, what I have at the top. 
and then we have uh, there's sort of four things that we're going to talk about. First off, is under coverage. Okay, it occurs when some members of the population cannot be chosen in a sample. So let's say, for example, with under coverage, uh, and and I'll pause it to let you write under coverage really quick. You can actually write all of these, but I'll, I'll pause it multiple times in here. So under coverage, um, I'll pause. Okay, so under coverage. Um, Imagine that you want to go take a sample and you want to sample the lunch room. So we have four lunches right now at Stewart's Creek. And we want to get the opinion of every student that is enrolled at our school. So for me, I we take the clusters, which are lunch. The, the four lunches are clusters. And I say, okay, I'm going to randomly pick one. Okay, I get second lunch. So second lunch, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to survey students on how they feel about, about parking at the school. So what members of the population cannot be chosen in the sample well you guys watching the video right now y'all can't be picked your opinion would not make it into that poll okay so we would have to change we'd have to redefine our population but that's an example there next non-response occurs when an individual chosen for the sample can't be contacted or refuses to participate so i'll pause for you to write that down okay so non-response let's say i go to the lunchroom and i have I've changed my population. I, I just want students that are face-to-face -face learners. So I go in there and I survey. Uh, maybe we can't get some students because they're absent that day for second lunch. Or I start talking to students and they just play a, a straight up don't want to talk to me or give me information about their opinion. Okay. Uh, so that would be non-response. Next we have response bias is a systematic pattern of incorrect responses in a survey. Okay. And I'm just going to let you write the definition on that one. All right, now, wording of questions. Uh, you don't have to write this because it's not a very good definition. Um, <clears throat> we're actually going to change that. I'm going to write this. So wording of questions, uh, when questions are worded in such a way that they invoke an emotional response. Yeah, invoke. Sorry, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so we'll we'll put that on there. Let's go with light blue. So you can write that for me. I'll pause it. Okay, so for the example on this, there's a video that I want you to watch. It's uh, it's from a show that's British. And it is uh, called Yes Prime Minister, where they and we already did we already showed examples with these two questions here, but it's a funny little British sitcom from like the 70s or something. Just a funny little video. So I'll go ahead and link that. Okay, so you watch the video. Uh, just something goofy, but that's the idea. In the video, he talked about um, how they'll ask the questions. And then they wait for the last one, and that's the one that they report in the news, okay? Um, and they're they're sort of leading you into that idea of oh, um, yes, national services is bad or national services good, okay? By the way, national services like our selective service here in the United States, it's you have to be registered to uh, to fight in case there's a draft. So, okay, we're gonna end this lesson here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there'll be more up soon.